G'day guys, welcome back to Just The Tips for Season 2024. This is now the sixth season in a row I've done a footy tipping show, and you'd think by now that I would have gotten better at footy tips, but this will be a weekly show for anyone who's new to the channel every week for the rest of the season, and we're going to predict the opening round, okay? So don't forget, for a start, if you're doing footy tipping this year, don't forget we need to get our tips in now. Further to that, there is a true footy league, which I'll leave the link for in the description of this video and in the pinned comment. So if anyone's not part of the tipping competition and wants to compete along the way, I think we've got about 1,400 people in that competition. And we have a second tipping competition for members of this YouTube channel. So if there's members out there that haven't gotten part of the league yet, you can find the link to it if you hit the community tab of this YouTube channel. I've got a post there with the link and the password. But I tell you what guys, it feels good to be able to talk about some real action for the first time in 2024. We've had a great off season. I've uploaded pretty much every day since the season ended and I wanna thank you for sticking fat with the channel over this period. If there is anyone out there that hasn't yet subscribed and you're enjoying football content or you would like to see plenty of AFL content on this channel, it would mean a lot to me if you subscribe to the channel and helped it grow. But anyway, let's get into these season opening fixtures. Opening round for the first time. All these games obviously in the New South Wales and Queensland states. So we're treated to a great season opener here between Sydney and Melbourne. Now these two sides did meet at this venue in the last round of 2023. Round 24, the Demons ended up winning this game by 21 points. The time they played before that was at the MCG and the Demons rolled them. Now I'm kind of expecting, you know, an improved Sydney this year when they're not decimated by injury, particularly in their back line. So my point being, I think we're removed enough from that 50 point loss at the MCG to make me not consider it too heavily. When it comes to this prediction, these two sides haven't actually met at the SCG since 2019 before round 24 of last year. So we're a bit removed from that as well. I will cover off, you know, where Sydney's at in terms of their own injuries. They're, they've kind of got a bit of a depleted midfield as it currently stands. As for Sydney's preseason, it was a bit of a mixed bag. There was a win over the Giants and then a four goal loss to Brisbane. Again, we're not really too concerned Concerned with the actual results, but they did come at the cost of some injuries. So we know Luke Parker broke his arm. I think it was against GWS. We know Callum Mills is already out. Taylor Adams also made a great start in his preseason game before injuring his knee. He's going to probably miss the first month of the season. So that's three first choice midfielders out of this team. On the other hand, though, I think we saw some positive signs from James Jordan, who comes in and plays on a wing, presumably. I know Chad Warner was rested in the second preseason game, but I think he's going to be fit for round one. Brody Grundy comes into the side. Joel Hamling will feature. So there's a few fresh faces for Sydney. As for the Demons, obviously for a start, we know that Angus Brayshaw has retired and we did see Clayton Oliver in one of their preseason games, albeit not for long. Now, I have no idea how realistic it is Clayton Oliver plays in this game because Melbourne have been pretty tight-lipped about it. From the Melbourne side of things, their midfield probably does get reinforced by Tom Sparrow had a pretty good preseason performance. He's going to play more midfield time this year. You know, Jack Billings comes into this team, probably not as a genuine on baller, but Christian Salem did spend some time as an inside midfielder and we're almost certain to see Caleb Windsor in round one as well. So that's covering most of the personnel and team stuff that I know. And I think ultimately my prediction for this game, while I tip Sydney to finish higher on the ladder, you know, with the current midfield situation and the fact that Melbourne clearly know, have no fears here with the SCG, I think I'm going to tip the away side, the Demons, to win this game by 14 points. I just think you take Adams, Parker, and Mills out of this best 22. And the midfield's not terrible. It's still good. They've still got like Goulden and Chad Warner and Robottom. Like there's still some pretty good midfielder types in here. I just think that might be enough to get Melbourne over the line here. And Melbourne should be a formidable opponent this year. So I'm tipping the Deeds by 14. Then we got Brisbane versus Carlton, a prelim final rematch up at the Gabba where Brisbane are notoriously strong. And I think they've lost one game there in the last two years. The last time these two sides met was obviously that prelim at this ground and Brisbane prevailed by 16 points. Carlton's preseason form wasn't necessarily confidence inspiring, but again, it is just preseason. Uh, they lost to the Cats by 17 points in the first game, then going down to the Demons by 38 points. They looked a little bit undermanned defensively and that will be an issue for them going into this game. We know Jacob Wiedering is not going to be available for this game. Pretty sure Caleb Marchbank is in serious doubt for this game as are guys like Jack Martin and Owies and Sam Walsh a little bit on a modified program, hopefully that's okay but if he plays is in some discomfort so there's a little bit of adversity piling up for the Blues nothing too sinister just yet but when you're coming up against the Brisbane Lions and possibly the toughest ask in football right now playing them at the Gabba it is worth considering the Lions preseason by contrast you know they, they notched up a couple of wins a big win over the Gold Coast Suns and then a four goal win over Sydney again nothing to really write home about in terms of results but we did see you know Lockie Neal who is overcoming a groin injury he's back into the side available for this game generally speaking they're a lot healthier 
comparatively. I know that Connor McKenna will be touch and go to play Carlton, as will Devin Robertson, as far as I'm aware. And we do know that obviously they're going into this game without Will Ashcroft or Tom Dode. So I think you just couple the fact that Brisbane should be a stronger side this year. Home ground advantage. Carlton got a little bit of adversity. I'm not sure I really trust them to start the season well. I think Brisbane might come out and make a little bit of a statement and win this game by 34 points. Then we've got Gold Coast versus Richmond. This is arguably the toughest one to pick, and I keep changing my mind about it. The Hardwick Cup, as it were. The last time they met, Gold Coast won the fi- this fixture up, you know, in the middle of 2023 at Marvel Stadium by about four goals. And then prior to that, Pretty sure it was Noah Anderson. Was it the game Noah Anderson kicked that goal and they won by two points? Either way, Gold Coast won that game by two points. But around that, it's worth noting that Richmond don't necessarily play poorly at Metricon. So that's usually something I consider. You know, how do teams play certain grounds and, and against certain teams as well? As for their pre-seasons, Gold Coast, you know, the, they were looked a little bit lackluster, but again, it is just pre-season. There's a few good signs for them. I really liked Jack Lacoche's performance in the first quarter, at least. We kicked four goals against GWS, three of them in the first quarter. Alex Sexton's the back line, I think, has some upside there as a positional move. But overall, you know, I think Gold Coast have the talent. It's just to what extent do they come out of the blocks? You know, Richmond's preseason by comparison was solid enough. They lost to Collingwood. They were a bit inaccurate. Collingwood are a good side anyway. They did beat Melbourne in the game before that. Where I think Richmond's vulnerability is, you know, there's a couple of injuries here, and I did forecast this at the start of the season, that I think they're vulnerable if they miss some key players. So specifically, I think Nan Curvis is in some doubt. Jack Graham has been ruled out with a five-week quad injury, and Tom Lynch is a touch and go. To clarify that on Nan Curvis, I believe that he's unable to provide a definite timeline, but was very keen to play opening round. So he is touch and go. I don't really know what to expect. I think, you know... The best version of both these sides can be pretty damn good. I don't know what to expect in round one, and that's why I keep flip-flopping. I see either result possible, but I'm going to tip Hardwick's Gold Coast to win by five points in a good game. And finally, we've got GWS versus Collingwood, and in my opinion, this is saving the best for last. These two sides obviously went head-to-head in a prelim final just a few months ago, and Collingwood just got over the line by one point. It was a ripping game. GWS seriously challenged them, and I'm expecting another thriller in this game. In terms of their preseason, you know, the Giants went down to Sydney, and then they beat the Gold Coast Suns. In terms of individuals, you know, a lot of the usual performers performed strongly. We saw some good signs from guys like Alika Lear and Aaron Cadman as well, who could both feature this year, although GWS's backline will be hard to break into this year. I'd imagine Cadman plays, but maybe not in Alika Lear. Uh, but in terms of like injuries, there are question marks on guys like Finn Callahan with a shoulder, Harry Perriman with a hamstring, and Isaac Cumming. They all missed this, at least their second preseason game, and Jesse Hogan and Darcy Jones. Darcy Jones has tonsillitis, possibly not best 22 anyway, but Jesse Hogan was merely rested. So there's a little bit to unpack there, but essentially there's a little bit of a question mark over how many of these players will be available for the Giants in round one. As for the Pies, you know, they had a 34 point loss to North to start um, in a game where I think they played a lot of seconds players and management it, so who knows. And then, you know, we got something a little bit closer to what we expect in reality with a 30 point win over Richmond. You know, other than the obvious Dan McStay, I don't think there's too many injury concerns here for the Pies going into this game. I think they took off Bobby Hill from one of their games with a tight hamstring, but apparently he should be fine for this game, as will Tom Mitchell, who rolled his ankle as well. So like I said, other than the obvious Dan McStay, we can assume a fairly strong Collingwood side. This game is tough. You know, the last time they played here, GWS won by two points. The Pies haven't actually won at this ground since 2016, but there's only been three losses since then. We're talking about a team in Collingwood who probably don't really struggle at this ground, so that's not a huge factor. So it's just a case of who do you think is going to be the best team on the night? And I like GWS. I think they're really strong on paper, but I've just got this feeling that the reigning premiers will come out and win this game by two points. I'm I'm expecting a good clash. I feel like we get a lot of good games between these two sides. In Sydney is a little bit more of an equaliser. But still, I think the Pies might come out and win this game by two points. So those are my tips, guys. Tipping the Ds to beat Sydney in the opening fixture. Brisbane should account for Carlton, I would have thought. Gold Coast narrowly over Richmond in a game that makes me really uncomfortable to tip. And then finally, Collingwood coming to win again in Sydney. So those were just the tips for opening round, guys. Let me know in the comments what your tips are, what you agree with or disagree with. Make sure you join the tipping competition. The fantasy competition link is also in the description of this. I thank you for watching. I thank you for subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.